Right, we're back on this job. I've just got to get this fan convector re reconnected back onto the system. Obviously, I drained it all down last time, put valves on. You can see the walls come out a little bit further. So they've like damp proofed it all. I'm not exactly sure. Um, they've probably put a membrane on of some description. So it should just be a case. Obviously, we've got valves on there. Um, top one was flow, bottom one was a return. I'll get them old iron pipes disconnected out of the heater and I'll just put, pop it back in copper. Yeah, should be straightforward enough. Should be straightforward enough. Um, yeah, I'll crack on. Right, you don't get an awful lot of space in these heaters. What I'm gonna do is cut that off there, cut that off there, and I'll try and get some main lines back into them um, three quarter elbows. What I don't want to do is disturb it on here because there's a risk that I could split the coil. Um, so yeah, I'll do that for a start, get the awkward bit done. I don't think that panel comes off on these. So yeah, I'll just get a reset and get that cut off. That probably leak. I'll probably have to get that off there now anyway. Let's see if I can get this one off there because it's twisting on it anyway. I don't want to damage that copper. What I'm going to do is get that piece out of there and put that back into the fitting because it's got a chamfered edge on it. And then I can put a female line onto that nipple. See how tight this will be. Might just be able to put grips on it. Yeah, it's not that very tight. Not very tight. That, back onto the heater. Female line on there. Obviously put a lot tight on that. Is that not gonna go? Is that a different thread? No, it was that way around your plonker. <laughs> Idiot. And that, that was the heater. It's a bit hot that, but yeah, you get the idea and then we'll go straight to copper off that. I'll do the same with the other one and that'll be fine. I love messing about with old stuff. <laughs> I can't get the uh, I can't get the nut off that piece that I want. It's twisting on the other one now, so what I'm doing is taking drastic measures. That's inside the gate that look. It's older than me that. Probably older than my dad as well. It still works. Interesting stuff. So it's twisting on this. Can't get that nut undone. But it's twisted on this one here. So we'll, we'll take this one off instead. There's always more than one way to skin a cat. All mess up a job as well, I say. There's always, one more, there's, always, there's always more than one way to mess up a job. And just locked up now and put a female line on there. We'll put a pair of new valves on and yeah, we should be good to go. Locked up 55 for the win every time. One thing that's never let me down. Probably put too much on and I always put a little bit of jet blue plus over the top. Belt and braces. Do whatever works. Manufacturers say, oh, I don't put any, don't put any jet blue on top, but right, I'm doing the job. Do you know what I mean? They're not the ones fixing the leak or getting the call out to say that you flooded the place. I don't, you won't, you won't flood it, but annoying little drips. Jet blue on the face, as you would any radiator valve.
Bottom one's always the return on these heat exchanges, top one's always the flow. Just at the heat in position, well, I'll screw it back at the end, but I might just need a little bit of movement up and down. Then pipes, I'll pull out a little bit first. So I'll probably put a 28 by 22 soldered reducer in there. Lighting's terrible in here. That'll bend out of the way a little bit for us. Probably bent it more in the way now than it was before. And then we'll just put some 22 elbows up with some valves in here somewhere and then connect back onto there. So top one was my flow, bottom one was my return. And it should be as simple as that. I solder will reduce your out of position just because it's going to make my life so much easier. That's a unity. Yeah, you can see. That's a 28 by 22 reducer. Do something I don't normally do and paste it inside of that because I've not got a lot of space. Right, that's in. Sometimes I find the reducers actually going a little bit too far. I tend to pull, pull them back out of touch. So, so the so the olive sits more on the face of the fitting, if that makes no sense at all. You probably don't. You probably know what I mean. We'll do the back one first because it'll make our life easier. What I'll do we'll kick it back out with a couple of forty fives to give ourselves a bit more space. Yeah. Fairness, it's so much easier fitting new stuff than old stuff. You haven't got a struggle, you haven't got the fight. But yeah, we do love a challenge. Let's go out a little bit more. Something like that. Right, we'll solder that up. Be warned, this will be the worst soldering on YouTube. I told you it wasn't going to be pretty. Right, we'll pop a full bore lever valve on the top. The pipe will be roasting still. And if it squeaks, it'll leak. Right, that's the flow all connected. Just got to do the same with the return, obviously connect onto that one. We'll probably come through again, a couple of elbows, a couple of 45s, and then put the valve, well, somewhere where we can get at it. That flow you can get to. Yeah, we'll get it done. This was my point earlier with these 28 by 22 reducers, or any reducer really. I always think you just want to pull them out of the fitting just to touch when you're going into compression. So the olive, the shoulder of the olive fits on, fits on the shoulder of the reducer. If you push them in too far, the olive tends to push past the nut. That's how I do them anyway, never had a leak. I had left the other day, I bumped into uh, the tiler we were using, you see my YouTube videos. 
She says, oh yeah, you're famous now. I thought, <laughs> well, A, I don't do the videos to become famous. I just do them because I enjoy it. It's just like a hobby. And B, there's a, I only live in a tiny little village. Uh, there's probably less than 60 houses in the village. And there's a, a TikTok plumber in, uh, who lives in the village. I don't think he knows, he knows that I live in the town of the so, so I'm not even the most followed plumber in the village. I think there's only two plumbers in the village as well, so that's typical, that, isn't it? But, yeah, what are the chances of that? You know, you live in a tiny little place. You're not even the most followed plumber. All good, though. All good. So I don't come out in a daylight hours, so nobody knows where I live. Well, I need to work that way. I'm not one of the cool kids. I do like TikTok. I do go on TikTok, but I'm not very good at making that sort of content. Well, I'm not very good at making long form content either, really. But I say so something I need to work on. I'm not very good at plumbing either, to be honest with you. <laughs> but we get by. I've got it because that's my job. You get told every day you're not good enough. But we still enjoy it. And it's, I'm lazy today, that's why I've not got my bender out. It's Friday. And I've had an hard week, so don't mind me for not getting the bender out. You don't want to see me crying on camera. Oh God, as long as it doesn't leak. Right, that's all connected up. I just needed to leave myself enough straight pipe to get the pipe stack back on the return. So I'll fix that back on. All that does is stops the heater from blowing cold. When the return gets up to temperature, that clicks and then the heat will turn on. Otherwise it will just blow cold. Um, well said, I've just got to wire it up, screw it back. Oh, and put my air tap thing back on at the top. And that should be that. Obviously these, I know, I know what people are going to say, you can't the lever is not going to fall to you're not going to be able to turn the lever on but what i'll do is just take them off the box in this in anyway and then if anybody else wants to work on the heater they'll have to take the box off and see these valves there so it's not like you're going to be using them every day and obviously i've put valves inside the unit which are which are full bore so you can can work on it all right we'll get the water on make sure there's no leaks i did already film that bit <laughs> not gonna lie but the camera was pointing away so i know there's no leaks but you didn't miss anything well, I don't think there's any leaks. Probably peeing out somewhere, knowing me. Is that leaking on there? No. As I say, I'll get the water on straight away as soon as I can on every job. That way, while you're here doing the electrics, wiring the bits up, you can be keeping a good eye on everything. And what I'll also do is pop the heating on and we'll get the thing hot and blowing. It's dead, but I know it'd annoy somebody if it isn't. So I've done it. I've done it just for you. Right, I've just fired the heating up and the pipe's getting hot already. Which is the flow pipe that's getting hot, which is good. <laughs> just give the heater a good good rub down as well. Always try and leave it tidy. I know it's a second hand heater, or very old, but we can only do our best. The walls all got to be redecorated and they've got to put some beading across. The only thing I haven't got is some longer screws for that, because obviously they brought the thing out. So I'll have to, I've got to come back and put a toilet back in the other side anyway, so I can bring some screws with me. Right, that's got the unit all working. It is blowing. What I'm going to do is just quickly clean the filter out as well because I don't think it's been cleaned since about 1970. Um, but yeah, pipes are getting red hot. Flow and return, which is excellent. That All this does is a heat exchanger across and then it just blows it through. Lovely. You can see it blowing, can't you? All the dust moving. Oh, and you can see that as well. Your finger on there a lot. It's a bit weak that one, but you can get them rewound actually. Some places, some places still rewind them motors. Yeah, that'll be fine. Job done. As always, thank you so much for watching the video. All the support is greatly appreciated. I apologise, it's only been one job again in this in this episode. It's just because I've been mad busy on stuff. It's actually my busiest week of the year. This one, uh, the week before the kids go back uh, to school. So yeah, I've just been running around and literally been here, there, and everywhere. And the problem is, 
everybody's under pressure and everybody wants you done and out of the way obviously to get cleaners and stuff like that in and I tell you sometimes they'll soon soon when you're done them jobs before you start so yeah uh, things will get back to normal in the next couple of weeks the uh, episodes will get a little bit longer again and hopefully a little bit more interesting I just wanted to say good luck to anybody starting college um, in the next couple of weeks I know there'll be a few people starting apprenticeships and a few people starting full-time plumbing courses so yeah I can remember when I first started I was really nervous to be honest with you because you, you, you sort of look through your textbooks in that and you think blimey I don't know anything but you soon pick it up and uh, what I'll probably do in the next couple of weeks is sort of a sort of a video explaining how I started how I got into the uh, how I got into plumbing um, because I know a couple of people have asked for that and we've obviously a few hopefully a few new people starting in the trade because we need it we need we need good tradesmen um, so yeah that, that'll be coming up in the next couple of weeks so yeah I just wanted to say thank you for all the support this one will be going out before bank holiday Friday as well so have a great bank holiday and we'll catch you all hopefully on Monday if I get time for editing the video if not it'll be sometime next week but yeah as always thank you for watching catch you next time